the city, Los Angeles, California. It's a magnet that seems to attract the young. Outdoor restaurants along Sunset Boulevard all cater to would-be movie stars of the future at one time or another. Los Angeles is also the center of the pop music world. Thousands of youngsters come out here with guitars in hand to try to crack the shell of success. It's also a city in which to bury one's identity. Teenage runaways from all over the country end up here on the Sunset Strip. A life free from parents, schools, responsibility. The hippie life, a world of psychedelic posters and faddish outfits. To the hippies, the rest of the world is square. They're young people looking to change the future. Like others, sometimes they get a little over anxious. It's a young place with fresh new ideas. Artists and sculptors have recently become trendsetters, often reflecting the mood of the city. Its fashions are colorful and exciting. The outdoors have become a way of life and water sports rate high among our favorites. With 65 miles of coastline, it's no wonder Angelinos love the beach. On a summer day, there are upwards of a quarter of a million people here. Once you've arrived, you can find barbecue pits, volleyball courts, and a cooling ocean breeze. Life is good here under the warm California sun. It's a great place to live. It's a large place with a small history. Its origin lies in the missions which can be found in the area. Mission San Gabriel was the first one in Los Angeles. It sheltered 1,300 Indians and spread out over many acres with its shops, granaries, and chapels. Adventurous pioneers started immigrating from Mexico, 1,000 miles and seven months of hard travel. By 1795, there were five ranchos in the area and a new mission was built in San Fernando. These missions became the center of activity, protecting the settlers and providing a place to gather. In peace, they were places of worship. During war, they became forts. From these missions sprang the towns, then the cities. The way of life is different today. People can't use the protection of mission walls. When they need help, they call me. It's a dry place, located in the middle of a Southern California desert. Yet its face is pockmarked with 120,000 swimming pools. There are over 90 fountains in the city. Its people consumed 169 billion gallons of water last year. But three times in its short life, it's had to reach out for the precious liquid. The city first got thirsty at the turn of the century, and its throat stayed parched. The closest water was 250 miles away, and the farmers in the Owens River Valley weren't giving. The result was one of the most savage range wars in history. Today, we're still reaching out. $11 billion have been earmarked to keep plenty of water flowing. We've solved our water problem, yet violence still remains. The outdoors play a big part in our lives. It's boating weather almost 12 months a year, and people have really taken to the sport. The ocean provides the playground. In 1962, the city began building the Marina del Rey. It already has berths for 6,000 boats. There are five yacht clubs, seven restaurants, two motels, and a hotel. If you want to live by your boat, there are numerous apartment complexes on the water with convenient shopping. There are also facilities for the day sailor. On weekends, you can see hundreds of power and sailboats of all sizes moving through the man-made inlet. It's a good, healthy way to enjoy life. Some people like living dangerously. The Los Angeles County Art Museum. $20 million worth of concrete and steel. 
It's the largest museum built in the United States since 1941. La Cienega Boulevard is lined with private galleries representing every price in art. Some are for the public. Others require an appointment. But the pride of Los Angeles is the Watts Towers, built by Sam Rodia. It took him over 33 years. The towers are constructed of concrete, broken glass, and chips of stone. Sam Rodia was an Italian immigrant who wanted to do something for the United States because, as he said, there are nice people in this country. Mostly they are nice, but not always. In the 1890s, freight and passenger travel from the San Fernando Valley to the Los Angeles Plain came by wagon over the Coinga Pass. Thirty years later, hundreds of automobiles turned out for the opening of the Mulholland Highway, bumper to bumper, a hint of the future. By 1928, there was one horseless carriage for every two and a quarter people. Today, there are over four million cars in the county, and seven freeways have replaced the dirt roads of yesteryear. With hundreds of thousands traveling these freeways daily, there are bound to be some problems. Most are accidents. Occasionally, they get more involved. With 280,000 cats and over a quarter of a million dogs, it's a city with a love for animals. If you don't have one at home, you can visit the zoo. There are 900 species here from all over the world. In the heart of the city is a memorial to prehistoric Los Angeles. You can walk among the first inhabitants of the basin. The saber-toothed tiger, the giant mastodon. They roamed this land long before man. Now they're extinct, unable to survive within nature's delicate balance. Some people try to upset today's balance. With a population of three million people, there's always something happening. Things were slower at the turn of the century. There were only 100,000 people to worry about. And there were only 109 policemen to do the worrying. 1933, the automobile was coming into its own. The 294 men assigned to traffic control processed 11,000 accidents. In fact, it was getting so crowded you couldn't drive your ostrich in the street. By 1940, the city had more cars than people, and a maze of freeways were beginning to take shape. To handle the problem, the department put together the largest motorcycle police contingent in the world. Today, the department is highly mobile. Los Angeles has less policemen per capita than any other major city in the country. The average year-round temperature is 65 degrees, a natural resource everyone enjoys. The railroads were among the first to realize this, proclaiming in the East only five dollars from paradise. With your ticket came a land option. It was just 100 years ago. Along with the climate, a brass band greeted some of the early arrivals. The Great Migration still continues. My job gets bigger every day. 25 miles from the heart of the Civic Center lies the Port of Los Angeles. It's the largest man-made harbor in the world. With a fleet of over 700 fishing boats, it's become the most important commercial fishing center in the nation. It's a bustling port which handles goods coming into the country from all over the world. There are agencies set up to handle most of the harbor's problems. Occasionally, things get out of hand in the city. People from 121 countries call it home. They can shop at the more than 30 all-night markets. Or, for five cents, ride on the shortest railroad in the world. From the top, you can see the freeway interchange known as the Stack. It was here, before the advent of the automobile, that oil was first discovered. Overnight, hundreds of derricks appeared. Residential areas became oil fields. Today, new refineries dot the landscape. They're among the most up-to-date in the country. Oil is still big business, and the wells keep pumping. Only now, they go unnoticed. Sometimes, other businesses try to go unnoticed when they're not above board. In the rolling hills just above Sunset Boulevard lies the exclusive community of Bel Air. It all looks quiet and serene, just as it did on the morning of November 6th, 
1961. On that day, Fire Chief Sawyer received a call about a small brush fire in the area. The fire raged out of control for three days. It consumed 484 houses, 21 buildings, and destroyed 6,000 acres of watershed. The fire was finally controlled. Not one life was lost. Bel Air has rebuilt its houses and most of the burn scars have been healed. Nature can sometimes create havoc for a city. So can some of its people. With over 5,600 little league baseball teams in the city, its youngsters have a love for the game. After 69 years in Brooklyn, the Dodger baseball team came west. They chose Los Angeles for their new home and became the first major league team on the west coast. Their new stadium was built to accommodate 56,000 fans. In the first year in Dodger Stadium, 2,750,000 people watched the club play, a new major league attendance record. Baseball is the sport of Americans. It teaches youngsters fair play. Sometimes they never seem to learn the lesson. In 1907, two men stepped off a westbound train with a motion picture camera. They came to finish a 12-minute version of The Count of Monte Cristo. The winter had stopped the filming in Chicago. Soon the word spread. Southern California had sunshine and warm weather most of the year round. Artificial lighting had not been perfected and all filming had to be done outdoors. The trend was set. Thomas Ince arrived in 1911 and produced movies with William S. Hart. A year later, Max Sennett came to Los Angeles. He brought a new kind of entertainment. They called it slapstick comedy. It was D.W. Griffith who gave this country its first serious film and a camera angle known as the close-up. Motion pictures grew into big business and its headquarters still remain in Los Angeles. It's a tough business. It requires a lot of giving. Some people figure they should only take. One of the biggest areas here is occupied by the University of California at Los Angeles. It's situated on 411 acres in West Los Angeles. UCLA has a student body of 29,000. A faculty of 2,000 distributed among its 71 departments and 14 schools and colleges. Since 1945, a $160 million building program has been underway, the largest on any campus in the United States. One of those expansions concerns the library. With over 2 million books, the university has the largest collection of any college in the world. UCLA is a place where young people prepare for a successful future. The goal is worthwhile, but the path is long and hard. Some try to find an easier way when it's illegal. It's a blend of people with different ideas, united by many common goals. A foothill chain runs through the heart of the city, dividing it into two parts. But man has changed the landscape to accommodate his needs. Natural canyons have been turned into roads connecting the city. For some, the hills make a nice place to live. Its residents enjoy a relaxed way of life. Here in Los Angeles, we are free to choose from among a variety of environments. Others enjoy the ocean, the subtle sounds of high tide and a cooling walk at sunset. No matter where they live, they're provided with all the city services. I'm part of one of those services. Like a young child, it's growing always trying to flex its new muscles. Bunker Hill in downtown Los Angeles was the site of many stately Victorian mansions. They housed the city's early society families. Now they're being torn down to make way for the Bunker Hill development, a planned complex of modern skyscrapers and parks. Up until 1956, buildings in the city were not permitted to exceed 13 stories. New construction methods enabled earthquake-prone Los Angeles to reach for new heights. Within the last 10 years, over 100 high-rise structures have been built, adding a new dimension to the city skyline. The city and its people are a constant source of change. In my job, I try to keep up. I carry a badge. 